Are you looking for a life of freedom and flexibility? Do you want to have as much success with your family as you do in business? Here in the Entrepreneurial Family Man podcast, we break down the barriers and bust the myths that are keeping you from living your best life at home and at work. You deserve a thriving family, rich faith, and business success. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Family Man podcast. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Entrepreneurial Family Man. We are back. The gang is here and we got an awesome show for you today. A fun topic too. I mean, we are talking about connecting with influencers. First off, let's just define influencers, right? I mean, we, we talk about who's an influencer, someone who has impact in your life, right? So it could be a, a popular author, a blogger, a speaker, a podcaster, you know, someone who you've received value from and, and that we follow. There's a lot of those. And with the internet today, they are at our fingertips. So easy to learn from. And so today we just want to talk about as guys, how we have navigated that and how we've actually connected with a lot of these types of influencers. So our show to just give you a glimpse today, we're going to talk about number one, why, why even do this? Why even connect with influencers? What's in it for us? What's in it for them? And should this be part of your growth strategy even? Number two, what not to do? Because we've all crashed and burned. We've all failed. We might have some stories there. So we want to remind you of what not to do and not how to, how to go about that. And then to just number two is listen and learn. Okay, listen and learn to what they're going to be doing. And then finally, how to connect and contribute with these influencers. And so let's jump back into the why. Why do we do this? Why connect with an influencer? Why try to connect to an influencer? What good is that going to come from that? And so I want to hand it over to, to my friend Michael here because Michael, we've talked about this and you have some good foundational reasons for connecting. Well, mainly it's because I just want to brag to <laughs> all course. my friends no. on social media that guess who I got to talk to? Guess who Selfie I Selfie time. <laughs> that's right no but that's like that's the natural urge in the beginning right so you can just kind of mm-hmm. say oh yeah i know this person and i know this person and i know this person even if you try not to go there uh, there's a natural feeling mm-hmm. i want to do that name dropper exactly but there's so much more to this picture than just name dropping first of all we all know the jim Rohn quote you've heard it quoted many times but i'll quote again because it's that valuable you Become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yes, hey. you do. And that time <laughs> could include listening to their podcasts, reading their books, doing all those things that expose you to who they are in their material. So that is one thing is to become more like them, think like them, to uh-huh. see the world the way they see it, to expand your thinking, to be changed by being around them. Yeah, and you feel like you know them by spending time in their books and their podcast. And then it just kind of, for me, it's been the icing on the, on the cake to get to hang out with them and find out that they're actually who they were on the podcast or in the book. Or what if they're not? <laughs> oh, that's scary. And there are those. There no, are those. Happens, it? <laughs> You're so much cooler online. We all know that song. I love that song. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm six foot five and drive a Ferrari online. <laughs> and then in real life, I'm living in my mom's basement and not doing any work. Yeah, exactly. It's, but it, there's something about that though, right? About the, just the power of, of association. Of, I mean, you're growing yourself. You're, you're following that quote and the guidelines that it gives you. But associating with yourself then leads to even some greater opportunities. I mean, talk about that. What opportunities could come as you start to associate with these top coaches or authors or speakers? Yeah. Uh, I I mean, I can speak to that. Just how you're viewed by people, right? If people tend to see you around these certain types of successful people all the time and the fact that you're associated with them, they start to think, huh, that guy must be like them. He must be successful too, and he must be important. Maybe I need to know who he is. Maybe I need to buy his products. Maybe I need to see what he's up to and and get in his head a little bit. You can uh, actually develop the perception that you're an expert just by spending time with influencers as well. There's a lot of other reasons as well. I mean, uh, you can also position yourself. Let's say you're early on in your business and you want access to their audience. 
I mean, they can't possibly serve everyone in their audience. So you can do a little crumb snatching, right? Like some of that stuff falls through the cracks and you can offer value to those people that they can't serve. And maybe that's even a way to develop some income in the process. Yeah. Maybe that's a good opportunity for me to brag on one of my close friends name. Um, I won't say who it is, but his name rhymes with Michael Bagrivi. And, um, Michael, you've gotten like a ton of business from Dan because he's developed a trust in you and people come to him and they want to coach with him and he's only got so many spots and they're filled and he's like, Hey, I think Mike, I'm sorry, I won't mention his name, but <laughs> Reichel, 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 no. wow. Reichel, but like I hear all the time from Ashley and Dan that they're getting great results from sending people your way. And that's because you've connected and he knows you and he trusts you that's the only reason why he would send anybody to anybody you know gosh dan is like one of the most generous guys i know he has such an abundance of mindset that he always thinks about oh if i give this stuff away it'll just lead to more abundance and he has just <laughs> such a great perspective but yeah even last month alone i probably just from knowing dan miller i think i made over six grand which is incredible just because i position myself as a trusted expert, somebody that I'm asso- who's associated with him and his brand and wants to add value to his brand. So yeah, it's been such a blessing being connected to Dan. So now that we've learned all this and we're succeeding in this, let's take a few steps back into the times where we might have fallen flat in our face and helping helping people understand there are good and bad ways to go about connecting with an influencer. There's some things of what not to do, right? And, you know, Jamie, you and I were talking about this, but I think we all have the, the, the connected nature, the connector nature, the woo, you know, when, when those people is over. But what are some examples of ways that have not necessarily worked or the common ways that people maybe want to connect to an influencer, but it doesn't quite get there? It's like moving too fast in a relationship. I mean, we're, we're married. We have kids. It's been a long time since we were in the dating relationship. It's like you have to develop a trust before you ask for anything. And you have to give before you take. I mean, that's very biblical, right? Give and it shall be given unto you. But there's this thing where if you don't know how to connect with them, you know, you go to a conference and you're paying money to be there. And then you think that you can just... Um, have the right to ask all the questions that you want. And maybe the people would give you the answers, but it doesn't lead to long-term trust in them. So this idea of meeting somebody for the first time and you're like, hey, can I take you out to dinner and pick your brain? I mean, that's a paraphrase of that is like, can I buy you something so I can get free advice or free coaching? And you spend somebody like Dan or Michael charge a lot of money for their coaching. It's like, if I'm going to them to try to get something for free, it's very off-putting. And so I, I, I would remember say, these guys have like, I mean, how, how many people do you think a guy like that gets propositioned by each month of, Hey, can I take you to coffee? Can I take you to lunch? Can I take you to, I mean, they've got to be picky with that kind of time. Their, their time is the same as ours. And so be but, careful, be yeah. careful just reaching out for a harmless meeting because that's just always going to kind of shoot yourself in the foot, I think. Yeah. And if you take a longer time approach to that. It's like, let me go and make a really good impression. This guy's my hero. I admire him for what he teaches and what he's done in my life. And so go to their, his event. When you reach out to them, have an attitude of, it's been so great to learn from you. I really respect you because that is what they get up in the morning and try to accomplish. And so the fact is, like, if you do that long enough with that person, they'll be honored to spend time with you because people want to go out to lunch with their friends. And they want to break bread and have you over and do things like that. So it's about, I know it sounds kind of funny, but that's the truth, right? It's like, this this reminded me of the Chris Farley episode of Saturday Night Live when he's talking to this, he's a a huge fan of this person. I forgot who it is, but he's, (laughs) remember that time when, when you, when you did that thing and that was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Just being kind of that creepy guy that's so blown away by influencer that you don't, you clam up and you don't even have a conversation with them. Don't be weird about it, right? Don't be like that creepy guy that just tries to stand next to him and waits for him to drop some kind of value on you. Engage them like a real person. They're human beings, right? 
And if they do happen to go out to lunch with you, pony up the dough and buy them lunch. Just because they're successful financially doesn't mean that wait. But these guys, some of these guys have millions of dollars, and their net worth is like a hundred times ours. Why would we want to buy them lunch? Wouldn't it be better for them to pay? That's true. That's what the government was. Oh wait, wait that was a dangerous <laughs> Oh, don't get into politics. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one of my fails early on. This is a few years ago, before I was, you know, even connected to some of these guys, and. And I remember someone got interviewed on someone else's podcast. It's a popular podcast. I asked this associate, I said, hey, would you mind introducing me by email to that guy? I, I would love to be on this podcast. And so it was a you know, nice introduction email. And then before the influencer guy even followed up, I followed up and I'm like, oh, it's you know, so great to e-meet you. I feel like I could offer a lot of value to your people that listen. And I just remember getting this reply back like, Hey, thanks. Nice to t- talk to you as well. Uh, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> you know, oh. just like shut down. <laughs> oh. Yeah, imagine if we took that approach with our wives when we were dating them before hey, they were I like you. You're pretty. Uh, you want to make out? Here's a ring. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so true. Okay, so we covered, I think, pretty well what not to do. Oh, okay. There's some good, like, tangible reasons why. So taking that in relationship example, okay, we're not in for the quick first kiss on the first date. We're going after this long-term courtship. And so this brings me to our, our, main, our main point here of listening and learning. And so let's talk about that. Let's kind of unpack that even in our own stories and how we've done that in terms of we've identified these guys that, that we're following because of their business success, their leadership, whatever niche that we're trying to focus on, whether it's you know copywriting or coaching or parenting. marketing, parenting. So we follow them. What are some practical things we can do in how we listen and how we learn from them. I'll jump in first here. Ask questions to serve them with their agenda. So an example would be, it's like, don't think about what you would ask them if they wanted to go out to dinner with you and they were just like, I just want to gift you an hour of free coaching and you could do whatever. It's like, make yourself valuable to them and their agenda. And so ask really good questions that like, if you're at a conference, ask questions that everybody's thinking of and that the, it, it makes the event great. And then you get known as being somebody who serves the audience or serves those other people. And this is something that I don't think a lot of people realize is these mentors, especially the people that have podcasts, a lot of them are looking for success stories. They're always looking for success stories that really sort of put the exclamation point on what they're teaching people. And so you can submit questions and they'll share those questions with your audience and they'll give you credit for sharing it. They'll be like, oh, this was a great question sent in by Chris Niermeyer. And then the host knows who you are and, and they respect that. And yeah. I think, I mean, there's something there too, where even prior to that is as we're talking about learning about this person, right? And listening is, if you know this, if you know you're going to follow this person, right? You're downloading their podcasts, you're reading their blogs, you're going to probably invest in some of their courses or material to truly, truly get engaged with what they're doing, right? Again, just like you gave the example of our our dating, you've got to invest in getting to know that person before you start giving them life advice. Like, by the way, marry me. You you want to get to know that person before you even contribute. Because I think there's something there where as you start to listen and hear about what motivates them, why are they there? They're there to bless and contribute to this community that they've built. And you're one of them at this point. Hmm. And so you start to learn, how can I contribute to this community? How can I become that success story like you talked about? But, you know, serving them well. I mean, Michael, you've got some good examples of truly ponying up some money, investing in some products and courses that have led to these great relationships with with an influencer. Yeah, man, I got to tell you, it hurt at the time too. I was not in a place where I had a bunch of disposable income. I had a young family or a growing family. I was uh, running a business and I was not like super successful financially. But my first exposure to Dan Miller was that I was listening to his uh, podcast that Jamie introduced me to actually. I heard the announcement for coaching with excellence, which was his conference at the time. 
And man, I was into it. I heard about it. I was like, wow, this is going to be so cool. I'd love to go to a conference like that and go to look it up. And it was a thousand bucks. Ouch. Oh, wow. A thousand dollars. And so uh, Jamie and I talked a little bit and we decided that we wanted to go. Broad trip. Broad trip. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So I ponied up the thousand bucks, which for me at the time was like a huge investment. Yeah. Down there. Got to meet in, and we stopped in Ohio and got some fireworks and blew them off in a parking lot. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a couple of sevens. We're going to have a good time with that one, of course. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I showed up there, almost peed my pants when I saw him. You know, the typical uh, raving fan. I felt like Chris Farley, like, that's awesome. I remember when you said that thing on your podcast that, that one awesome. time? That was awesome. <laughs> so that was, that was me, all like, uh, like a jittery little... Um, fan and but after that conference that was that first step toward him it it led me just a little bit closer and there's an opportunity to sign up for an even more expensive program which I did right there on the spot and I bought his books listened to his stuff dug into his material and each step I took in my investment the closer that I got to him and the more that I was able to develop more trust with him which eventually led me being invited into his personal mastermind group. And then I became a uh, partner with his coaching practice as well. And now I'm privileged to get referrals from him all the time. But that took a a large financial time investment to get to that point over several years. Yeah, that's good, though. I mean, that's that's really what it takes. You know, we're talking long term here. We're, We're, these are relationships that we're building. It's not just connecting with an influencer, like we talked about to get an endorsement or have a cup of coffee or whatever. Like we really want to value these people, what they want to share with us. And there could be some great fruit from that, just like you shared. I mean, I remember when I, you know, there's a whole story in how I got connected to Dan, but I remember when I first helped Dan plan his, his first, you know, group cruise where he took all these guys and had this conference at sea. And that's where I got to meet Jamie for the first time. It was awesome. But I remember there's this guy named Michael Hyatt who was there and he was one of the speakers. And, you know, I kind of scratched the surface, learned a little bit about him. This whole new world was, was just kind of new to me at the time. And so, but I remember just like serving him well that week, serving he and his wife. How can I make your vacation more successful? And, and just, you know, I was able to have a meal or two with them and learned about and learned the fact that he actually loves cruising. And so we started to share just this connection of like, Oh man, tell me about what other ships have you been on? And what's the difference between this, that, and the other? And the banter of, of you have something to offer, I have something to offer. And there's this kind of mutual benefit to where now it's like he and his team will reach out about, hey, there's this new cool new ship. What if we did something in 2019 on this? And mm-hmm. there's just this, this cool thing that happens when you're offering value to somebody because it's an interest of theirs and you're, you're getting to serve them well. And that, that kind of leads us to this, this next point of, connecting, connecting with their community and contributing in their community. You know, Jamie, you've done this really well in terms of you're a natural connector. You're just gifted with friendliness and, and people. But how do you connect and what tips did you give to people to contribute to their online community, contribute to the influencer himself? Again, it's just like what you said, what you did with Mike Hyatt, is that you looked at how you could serve that person and make that person's life and business better. And so you weren't there to be a groupie like me and Michael after we blew up fireworks at Dan Miller's event. <laughs> it's, um, we learn from them how to do it. And the other thing that you mentioned is that one success connecting leads to another. Like Dan and Michael Hyatt are really good friends. You never would have got that account with, with um, Michael Hyatt's company and done all those events with them if you weren't trusted by Dan. And so... I think probably the biggest issue is it takes a lot of time. And so you go to those events and you serve and then people want to see you again. They're happy to see you when you come back because you, you know, you take your relationship from being an acquaintance and you move into friendship because you have that time that, that elapses and all the experiences are positive. It's like yeah. they call on you when they need something. Michael, you, you look like you're going to jump in here. <laughs> what do you got brother <laughs> i just think it's it's crucial to know like okay what you do with what you learn from that person is pretty key as well i think influencers want to know that 
what you're learning from them, you're actually applying and it's making a difference in your life. So first of all is, all right, if you're going to listen to their podcast, you're going to read their book and you're going to go to their conference, do something with that material, right? Yeah. But it's a work. You can't just let it sit there. And once some fruit starts to show up in your life from applying that to share that with that person, man, do they love to hear when their life's work changes another person's life. So if it starts to change your life, start shouting that from the mountaintops. Go ahead, Jamie. No, I have a perfect example of that. My friend, Kyle Schultz, um, we, we all know Kyle. He's a gifted photographer, an awesome teacher, but he builds these courses. He went to Donald Miller's event, Don, not to get confused with Dan, but Donald Miller's the story brand guy. He wrote the book. What's the relationship book that he wrote? Scary Close? But, it was too scary. I didn't read it. Yeah. Just kidding. Anyway, this guy is uber successful in the marketing business with his story brand framework. Kyle went to his event he learned from him and went back and hit it out of the park by using what he learned from Donald Miller. And when the book comes out, that was like, I think it was instantly a New York Times bestselling book just from like the presale. It's like on page 30 something is a whole story about Kyle and what he did with his company because Donald Miller had an amazing example and a testimony of somebody who actually used what they learned from him and had success with it. And now, Kyle's platform is is having success just like Chris, like what you've done by connecting with these guys like Bob Goff and all these other folks. Well, you guys both just two great examples there of that whole kind of poster boy syndrome. But let's be honest, that's what got, that's why these guys contribute to the world is they want to share the value that they've learned with people, hoping that students will be transformed. And if they find a student that's transformed that can, like you said, shout it from the mountaintop you're kind of the poster boy for going through that course. This is what can happen, right? I mean, Jamie, you and Ruthie going through financial peace and Dave Ramsey. And I mean, you were on their podcast, right? Yeah. And like a million people listen to that podcast. It's like you get the ability to be exposed if you actually do the work that the thought leader says. It's because they're like, how can we get you on the show so you can inspire other people to do what you guys did? Because that's, that's like what we get up in the morning to do is to teach right. people to do that. And so I think people just don't realize the fact that if you reach out to these thought leaders with testimonials, they're just like looking for them. And I would say 99.9% .9 of the people that listen to a podcast will never engage or even leave a review. It's like, yeah. There's guys like Cliff Ravenscraft that we know that have really successful podcasts. Like you go on there and there might be 300 reviews. Like Pat Flynn will read your review if you go on and say like, I love this podcast. It brings so much value to me. Every week I listen to it. It's like you're helping him, supporting him by going and saying, you're basically giving him like a big high five and saying like, you're doing an awesome job. It's Great like, point. Yeah. Why wouldn't you, if you love that person and they've given value to you, why wouldn't you go and do the same thing? And that's probably a really good opportunity for us to ask all our audience to please go and leave us a really awesome review. So if this podcast is adding tremendous value to your life, like let's get it out to more people. Is that a yeah. shameless plug or what, guys? Hey. That is. That's a great shameless plug, though, yeah, by the way. I'll take it. Yeah, you know, one time what I did is um, I was pretty early on just getting into this personal growth stuff, and there were five people influencers who really did impact me in that first year. It was Michael Hyatt, Dan Miller, Andy Andrews, Dr. Kevin Lehman, and Dave Ramsey. And I wrote a blog post just highlighting the different ways that each one of those men had changed my life and added value to me and posted it on social media and tagged each one of them in it. And I heard back from all of them thanking me for that. I mean, how often if you ask a question to an influencer just based on what you want from them, you're not going to hear from them very often. But if you highlight them, what they're doing, the difference they're making, thanking them in some unique way, man, who doesn't want to hear that about the work that they're doing? Absolutely. That's, that's a, a good point. That's a great point. I'm glad you shared that because I remember you posting that and, and just sharing about how like literally five guys who are, let's be candid here, kind of heroes in our space and they all engage with you because of that just simple simple share and you giving them that digital high five that salute of like hey you guys impacted me and i just want to share that with you and, and with all my friends that 
these guys are important and they're special and that this is what they've done in my life to see see change so yeah michael yes. that approach is just like you can get right to the front of the line and their mind of just being that that means everything like i taught middle school for years and i remember at the end of the year getting handwritten notes from kids saying you know mr slingerland you were my favorite teacher it was like i still have some of those letters like stuffed away and um you know most of the students that thought that about me didn't write me a letter but man hmm. you know when i saw those kids in the hallway the next year it was like i was something about the fact that they acknowledged something that was so important to me which was making an impact on the kids and that made me feel successful as a teacher getting those handwritten notes so um, you know jamie you're a master at unique gift giving like this is something I've seen you do over and over again, where you'll think of something and before you know it, a few weeks later or something, you're at this influencer's house having a conversation with them. Um, I know you made some signs for several influencers. Tell us about how you do that. I think that's like one of your unique abilities is connecting with these guys through gift giving. Yeah, I think it takes a little level of vulnerability to just take that step, but it goes back to what I said about writing a, the note for the, for the teacher is like, I know as a teacher, how it feels to be on the other side. I think people don't, they think that their gift is going to be rejected or they're going to come across as a stalker, but like, just think about what's most important to you. And then people affirm that and they say, Hey, you're doing a really good job at, at I mean, Chris, I think you do a really great job with your employees and in your travel business is that you you do that retreat with them and you say, hey, guys, like you're part of this. It's like, this is why we do what we do. And, you know, we support each other. I guess I've just learned that I've had positive experiences all the time. One of our friends that was in the mastermind group with us for a while, Carrie Wilkerson, she's got a huge platform. She, you know, she speaks in front of ar arenas. I sent her one of those Barnwood signs with her anniversary date. And like she texted me after she got it and she was like, this is so amazing. I love it, blah, blah, blah. She was thankful. And she did an event here in Nashville like a couple months ago with just like a handful of, of people like in her own personal mastermind group. And she invited me to that weekend retreat. And I wasn't looking for, I didn't give it to her thinking that I wanted to be invited to something or, you know, like this is going to come back on me. But the fact is people notice it's when you affirm them, it's people notice just like, I think the example with my student is probably just the best. It's like, imagine if your kids come to you and say, dad, like you're just doing such a great job. Like, by the way, my kids haven't said that in a while, but so they, maybe they should, but it's like we get up in the morning and we have these missions that we're on. And when somebody comes over and gives you a big high five and says, you're doing a killer job, then we take notice. And Michael, if I could point out one other thing, you had that post on your Facebook, the husband's leaders page about, you know, reach out to a new father and say that you're doing a good job. Um, you just basically reflected on the fact that it's really hard when you have that first kid and your dad trying to do it. I reached out to a guy and did exactly what you said in that weekend challenge. And he told me that he's been having a couple hard days and that that, that made a huge difference. Hmm. It's like, it's easy to do something like that, but it's also even easier not to take the time and do something that's really impactful on somebody. So yeah. Man, I'm glad you shared that with me because that makes me feel really good that I put that challenge out there now. <laughs> See, it's working. Yeah. Exactly. It's working. So just to wrap up, right, as we kind of land this plane and, and come in, remember to, to listen and learn. Okay, listen and learn to these guys, these influencers that you're following. Truly be attentive. And I think you're going to also learn a lot about yourself. You're going to grow as a person. Then you're going to find ways to connect and contribute to their community, to the, the people that they're trying to influence. And likely if you do it the right way, like my friends, Michael and Jamie here, you're going to get to connect with these influencers, which brings us to resource of the week here. Probably one of the best places where the three of us have connected with influencers and arguably probably one of the biggest conferences with the highest concentration of influencers is none other than social media marketing world. And it's, uh, it's held in San Diego, usually about the, the last week of February, first week of March. We're going to put that in the show notes here, but just it is one of the best conferences to go and listen to and learn from 
these giants in their fields. If you're growing your speaking career, if you're growing podcasting, if you want to learn about the best hacks and tips and tricks and various social media channels, there's some of the top speakers and, and influencers in each of those realms. And they're so accessible. I mean, it's just, it's just a, a hallway full of these people. And this is where you get to start by listening and learning. And then you will truly, even in a short weekend, be able to connect with these people. So that's something there. By the way, the three of us will be there this year. We want to connect with you. There's a certain day, I think it's Friday, where we're going to be up in the networking plaza. And as part of, of Dan Miller, who we're associated with, we'll be actually doing some free coaching and just sharing these little 15-minute coaching sessions about how we can help you, if there are burdens that you're carrying or, or struggles that you're facing that we can help you unlock. So come connect with us there. Guys, any final words in terms of how important that conference is or other ways to connect? Yeah, I'll add that this conference is for anybody in business. I had this whole thing kind of anti-social media a couple of years ago. And I think this conversation really is appropriate that just about connecting with folks and um, opportunities come oftentimes through other people and those relationships. And so I would say, even if you're planning on becoming an entrepreneur and you're in a job, this is a place where you can learn a lot and just rub elbows with some people that are already sort of in the game doing what you want to do. It doesn't matter if you have an electric company, you're in the service business or or a podcaster. I mean, the first year that I went, I didn't really think I'd be doing a lot of the stuff I'm doing today. So it's a place where kind of dreams get birthed and inspiration. And uh, you can, Michael, anything else that you want to add? Yeah, just on a very simple level, let's say that you want to connect with somebody, but you don't know what to say. And maybe you get intimidated by influencers. Just apply that golden rule, right? How would you want to be treated? They're a human being just offer some value. Just say, thank them. If you have absolutely nothing to say, if their work has influenced you or impacted you, simply say, thank you. What you've shared with me has caused this change in my life and I appreciate it. That alone is just such a solid step forward. So on on a basic level, simply just be a human being and be thankful and grateful. That is a good word to end on right there come away with an attitude of gratitude. No matter if you're talking to the janitor or the CEO, life will be good for everyone involved. So, hey, until next time, guys, this is a fun, fun topic and a fun show. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Entrepreneurial Family Man podcast. For show notes, resources, and to connect with us, visit www.entrepreneurialfamilyman.com.